Good morning, PCM family. This is Pastor Merrick Carter coming to you live from lovely Oxnard, California. I pray that everyone has had a wonderful week, uh, especially here in Oxnard, Southern California. The weather has been fabulous, beautiful, beach weather. So uh, we're just grateful to be here and we're grateful to be amongst the living. And of course, we're grateful to be in our right state of minds. A um, couple of quick announcements. Next week, if you're local, we're having our potluck. So we want to invite you to come on out and, and fellowship with us. It's after the second service. Uh, the first service is at, at 1030. And after the second service, we're going to have a potluck and just and fellowship and eat and be merry. So we encourage you to come out. If you don't have anything to bring, that's okay. Just if you're local, come on out. We'd love, love to have you because, you know, we love to fellowship. Amen. Uh, another quick thing, we have our Bible studies, just kind of going over the loop that, just to make sure you guys understand, we have a great Bible study that's every Wednesday at uh, 7 o'clock, and Deacon Eric is teaching the Bible study, doing a phenomenal job. And we also have Deacon Larry, who is leading up the, um, the, uh, over, uh, the um, breakthrough meeting every Monday at uh, 6.30, is it 6.30? At 6? At 6, I'm sorry at six o'clock, so uh, we encourage you, if you'd like, to come on out to that. Amen. Okay, I think I've covered everything that I can think of. Um, we also want to, that's about it, covered everything. So at this time, we're going to take up our tithes and our offerings. God loves a cheerful giver, and I want to thank all of you out there that, uh, that, have, that has partnered with us. Your financial support has truly been a blessing, and um, we thank you so much, but I, I always make it a point to say that if you do belong to a church elsewhere, take care of your church and your pastor first. That's really important. I don't want to take anything away from anybody else. If you have something left over, then of course, hey, we appreciate you, you blessing our church. And of course, if you feel that this is your home church, then you know what you need to do. Amen. So um, there's a couple of ways that you can give. We have an app called Tithely. It's an extremely secure app. Um, just make sure that you, where it says, where uh, you put Pacific Coast Ministries, because if you don't put that there, it's not going to go to us. Now, if you use the app all the time, and it's always coming here, then it should automatically be there, but you just want to always check to make sure. You can also go to our website at PacificCoastMinistries.com, and on the homepage at the top where it says giving, same thing, it's tithely, and uh, we'll receive it that way. Amen? So having said all of that, let us, let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for those that are giving and those that didn't give but have the willingness to give. We pray the monies that's received will be used in a mighty way so that we can do all that we can to uh, build your kingdom, Father. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I want to talk... Well, first of all, I want to invite your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And this is Paul talking to the Corinth church. And we'll also have it on the overhead for those of you that are here. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And of course, I'm reading out of the NIV version. And it reads as follows. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I pray that as I break the bread of life that you'll teach and preach mighty through me. And as you do this, those that are here, those that are watching will be helped and encouraged so that we can be the very best we can be for you. Father, we pray and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk from the subject, the growth in your struggles. The growth in your struggles. It is incumbent upon you to understand and understand with clarity that no matter who you are, where you're from, your ethnicity, your views, your upbringing, it doesn't matter. There's one thing we all have in common, and that one thing is a sinful nature. All of us, we were born 
in iniquity. And this is a trait that we have picked up or inherited, if you will, from Adam and Eve. Because ever since Adam and Eve ate from the wrong tree, ladies and gentlemen, you and I have been eating from the wrong tree ever since. The Bible said uh, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And even as a believer in Christ, when we accept Christ in our lives, we have a new nature. We've taken on a new nature, a godly nature. But even that godly nature that we have, that sinful nature is still there, ever so present. For well, Paul does tell us I, uh, somewhere, I think it's in... Uh, uh, Romans chapter 7 around verse 15 he says I don't want to stand it why do I do the things that I don't want to do and the things that I want to do I don't do he goes on to say it's no longer me that does but it is a sin that lives within me all of us have a sinful nature period and as believers in Christ we're saved by grace now let me be very clear just because we have a sinful nature doesn't give us the right to go out there and just sin and live in the old kind of way no it is our responsibility as Christians through the power of the Holy Spirit to be the very best we can be for God but because of this sinful nature that all of us have we're all going to be tempted temptation will always be present and the temptation I'm referring to is the kind of things that God is not, does not approve of. And yet the Bible tells us that regardless of how much we're tempted, God is not the one that puts it out there. You got to remember that Satan is real. And he sets up, uh, um, uh, systematically will set traps in our pathway of life. He will put things out there that he knows that's desirable to you and even though it's desirable to you you have to fight it off because it's no good for you. There's some of you watching me right now. In fact, all of us, you have desired something that you knew what was you know that was wrong but you went and did it anyway. Now that you're in this situation, you feel trapped. You're struggling. The key is don't heed to temptations. Don't put yourself in situations you know where you're vulnerable. Because the temptations will come. No one is immune from life's struggles, life's temptations. Looking back at the text, Paul is basically saying no temptation is unique to us. And God's faithfulness guarantees strength to encounter, it, uh, to encounter it successfully. Whatever your temptation, whatever your issues are, because we all have them. And I want to be very clear. I, I, I want to purposely be redundant about this. I don't want anybody listening to me and going back saying, well, pastor said it's okay to sin. I can, since I got this sinful nature, I can live in your kind of way. No, that's not okay. Because as a believer in Christ, the Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives within us. So we want to be the best version of ourselves for God. Amen, somebody. I'm talking about growth in your struggles. And you also have to understand that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The Bible says you reap what you sow. I said it in the past and I'll say it again. I can understand why a lot of our young people, they do crazy things. When we were young, we tend to do crazy things. But when we get older, we got to get wiser. Hello, somebody. There's growth in your struggles. So even if you're tempted, you have to stay firm. And the way you stay firm is continually developing your relationship with your Father in heaven through Christ Jesus. And we do that by studying his word, having a prayer life, associating, associating ourselves with people that's going to be an encouragement to us so when these temptations come, you'll be able to fight them off. 
We're living in a society that people are beginning to have the mindset, even so-called confessing Christians, thinking, well, since I, you know, I have these desires for X, Y, Z, you know, I'm going to live for the day, the heck with tomorrow, I'm going to go on and do what I'm going to do. That's not cool in the eyes of God. Now, let me be clear about this. I'm not talking about living a legalistic life. In other words, we get to heaven based upon our works. I'm not talking about your salvation. What I'm talking about is you want to live a fruitful, fulfilling life. There are a lot of Christians today, ladies and gentlemen, that love on God, but living unfruitful, unfulfilling lives because they allow the temptations that they're confronted with get the best of them. They have this mentality. What's the song go? If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. And you pay a price for that, ladies and gentlemen. That's just how it is. Now, we are forgiven, praise God, as a believer in Christ. I've often said, you make mistakes, you forgive. And understand that the more of a relationship you, you build with your Father in heaven through Christ Jesus, the stronger you're going to be. So when these temptations hit, hit you, you're going to be able to deal with it a lot better, a lot easier. It gets better as time goes on as long as you're building your relationship with the Lord, where you, where you don't have to put on these facades in front, of, in front of other people trying to get everybody to think how holy you are. You don't need to do that. You can be yourself. Amen. The question is, what can we learn from our struggles? What can we learn from our temptations that come our way? Because they, they go, they, 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 they go, together. The first thing you'll find in your notes, you will mature in your struggles. When you're trying to resist temptation and you're struggling with this thing here, you're going to grow from it. The Bible tells us in James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish his work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So when we go through these challenges in life, life and I'm kind of mixing the struggles along with the temptations, if you will, for the sake of the message, you're going to grow from that. Understand that. Don't waste your wilderness. You know, don't go through difficult situations and, and uh, uh, struggles and you just throw it away. Remember, so if you made mistakes or you know you're confronted with certain things, you're not going to make the same mistake again. Um, I like to ride, I'm an avid bike rider. I love to ride my, my bike, period. And when you ride, when I ride my bike, the other day I was riding my bike, I should say, and um, I noticed that there was a lot of glass in a certain part of the road. And if anyone that rides a bicycle, you want to avoid glass because you don't want a flat tire. And I remember where that glass was. So when I went around and I was coming about it again, I remember where that glass was. So I made sure I made a conscious effort not to go that route. It's almost like when you're driving a car. If you know that they're doing some construction on the road, then you know what, I'm going to take a detour. I'm not going to go down that road because I remember if I go down that road, I'm going to be caught in traffic forever. But if I go down around and about, it's going to be a whole lot easier. What am I saying? Remember, whatever issues that may come up, you don't thrive on them. Just remember so you don't make the same mistake twice. Amen? <clears throat> but understand, you're going to grow. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're going to grow and you're going to mature. As you get older, and those of you who've been around long enough, you learn things. How do you learn? Sometimes you just have to go through some things in life. And some of the things that we've had to endure may have not been very pleasant, but we learn from it. And in that, we grow, we become more mature. Amen. So that as we journey in life, we can definitely help those who may be going through a similar situation. I'm talking about the growth in your struggles. 
and what can we learn from our struggles? You will mature in your struggles. The second point I want to bring to your attention is never give in to temptation. Never give in to temptation. The Bible tells us in James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15, it says, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted, but, but God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does the tempt, nor, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when, by his own evil desire, he is dragged away and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. God is not the one when we're tempted with various things in life is doing this. You have to understand the flesh is a son of a gun. Like I've alluded to you earlier, we all have a sinful nature. Some of you watching me right now, you may be struggling with your sexuality. That's a, that's a struggle for you, whatever it is, whether you're straight or gay, whatever. And it, it, is a, it, it, it is a struggle. And some of you are struggling with it and you've just given up and thrown in the towel and said, well, it, it, I am what I am. And God's going to be okay with it. No, it's not okay. I, and again, I'm not picking on any, I'm just being generic here, whether you gay, straight, whatever, doesn't matter. Sin is sin. And we're living in a society that will try to convince you that no matter how you live, it's okay. When the Bible clearly says it's not okay. You cannot compromise God's word. You cannot give in to sin. You cannot make excuses for sin. You have to be mindful of that. Is it easy? No, it's hard. Because that, that, that desire, whatever it might be, it's there. The key is, how do I deal with it? I'm not just going to give up. Don't want a towel. And a lot of that happens because we're living in a society that promotes things that are contrary to the ways of God. You have to fight the good fight. Now, some of you might say, well, you don't want to stand, Pastor. It, it, I, I've tried, I've tried, and I can't. Let me tell you something. You, you are stronger than you think. The Bible says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. The key is you have to just keep fighting. Understanding that, you know, even in a fight, there's some battles you're going to lose. The victory is, the war has already been won through Christ Jesus. But in the meantime, the Bible says that we're mere pilgrims that's just passing through. And we have to fight the good fight not giving up and understand that whatever we're struggles with having to deal with whatever temptations that we're confronted with that you know what I'm going to grow from this thing here I'm going to be better I'm going to be more aware as I said before is it easy no but you can't give up. If you play basketball or you play football, or let's say play bat basketball, you know, you, you're not the best shooter in the world, but you want to be better. So what do you do? You work on your game. If you know that no matter how hard you try, you're not a really good shooter, you know what? I can definitely work on my defense. You have to figure out through the power of the Holy Spirit how to deal with whatever it is that you're having to deal with when you're confronted with temptations and with struggles. 
And again, I want to reiterate something. You will grow from them. I know it's not always pleasant, but believe me when I tell you, you will grow. You'll be smarter, you'll be better, you'll be stronger, and you're going to be wiser. But you just can't give up. You just can't throw in the towel. That's why it is important for everyone as believers in Christ to be around people that's going to love on you and that's going to support you and encourage you, no matter what your struggles are. Now, I will say this. Be very careful who you, what you, be careful who you share what you share with. Because church folks can be like a broken refrigerator. They can't hold nothing. But there's someone you should be able to, there should be someone that you can confide in that's going to love on you. Even if you've got these struggles in your life, that's going to give you encouragement. And even if you should slip and fall, that's not going to kick you to the curb and send you to hell, but going to encourage you and says, hey, look, booby, you can make it. I'm praying for you. If you make mistakes, repent. And keep moving forward. Stop dwelling in the past. It's going to be all right. And what happens as time goes on, when you continually do that, you get better, you get stronger. Amen? Amen. Let's recap it. We're going to tie this thing off here. I'm talking about the growth in your struggles. And what can we learn from our struggles? The first thing we learn is you will be, you will be mature in your struggles. You're going to be more mature in your struggles, period. Isn't that beautiful? The second point is never give in to temptation. Don't give in to temptation. And the, the first thing, don't put yourself in a situation where you're going to fall. If you know that you like spending money, you know you like jacking your credit card up, doggone it, don't have the mentality, well, I'm going to go window shopping with a pocket full of money because you're going to get in trouble. You have to use wisdom in some, some things. Amen. Giving into temptation can spiritually kill you. And we need to know that God is not the one tempting us. Don't ever forget that. Last but not least, the third point, you will not lose your value in your struggles. The Bible tells us in Romans 8, 28, it says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. You're not going to lose your value in your struggles. Ladies and gentlemen, just because you're going through some challenges in your life, you think, well, I'm, you know, there's something wrong with me and I'm, I'm no good and God, he may not love me and all this. Kind of, no, that's Satan putting that stuff out there. I'm just telling you, you're going to go through struggles in life. You can get through it. Amen? You can get through it through the help of the Holy Spirit. Don't devalue yourself. You're somebody in the eyes of God. God does not make mistakes. And understand, God does not bless sin, but he can bless things that may come from out of sin. I've learned years ago that I don't care how much of a situation I might want, if I know that if it's sinful and not pleasing to God, Good is not going to come out of it if I stay in that nonsense. I've learned that. That's what has kept me from getting my behind beat up. Like some of y'all, it happens all the time. Because you're in a situation, you're struggling. You're struggling. Why? Because you've allowed temptation to get the best of you. And instead of you repenting and getting out of it, you stay in it. And God isn't going to bless that. It doesn't stop loving you. But again, you can make it if you just fight the good fight. Do what you got to do. You will not lose your value in your struggles. You are somebody in his eyes. That's why I've always been, I'm going to close it out here, but I got to say this. I've always been irritated with people, particularly church. I've been in church all my life and and, and everybody that comes to church got issues and problems. Everybody. Nobody can tell me different. Everybody. 
And it always irritates the you know what out of me when somebody's going to come in and they all act all holier than thou and they know everything. They can quote scripture and they know the bylaws backwards and forwards of the church and they they, they got they, you know look look at me my life is a, is all this in a bag of in a bag of chips. When uh, you go behind closed doors, you find out that's not the case. Because there are things that whoever, no matter who you are, you see the people that have to raise the most, the most cane about how holy they are are the ones you got to really watch. I'm not saying it's wrong to say, you know, God is good and living a holy life. Yes, we want to do that. But what tends to happen, people that are struggling, they think, well, man, I guess I can never get to that person's level because they don't, they don't have this and that and the other. No, you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. I will always say that. You never know what goes on behind closed doors. And every time you come across someone, every time they open up their mouth, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, those are red flags. Understand that. Because there are things going on with them they don't want you to know. We're all in this thing together, and we have to encourage one another and love on each other. That's what it's all about. And understand that whatever temptations I'm confronted with, whatever struggles that I'm dealing with, that it's going to make me stronger, and I'm going to make it through this thing because God loves me. And as I've alluded to you before, the Bible said, that if, 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 uh, if I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me, if God is for us, who can be against us? So we have to continue to fight and do what we can to be the very best version of ourselves for God. And when it's all said and done, and when we live this life on this earth no more and we stand before God, you'd want to hear those wonderful words from the Lord when he says, job well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. Listen, I pray what I shared with you today was helpful that you got something out of it. And I know that, like I said, there's growth in your struggles. There's growth in your struggles. We all got them. The good thing about it is it doesn't, it gets easier. The more that you build your relationship with your Father in heaven, and the older you get, it gets easy. It doesn't get as, as intense. Does that make any kind of sense? It's like when you go to the weight room. If you haven't been in a weight room in 100 years, you go to the weight room and you start lifting weights, man, it is hard. But if you go into the weight room on a regular basis, you, your muscles aren't torn. Your muscles aren't as sore. Why? Because you're used to working out. You can do it. Amen? Amen. All right. There might be some of you that you heard the message, but you never accepted Jesus in your life as your personal Savior. Because I've been talking to the saints, not the ain'ts. And you want to accept him because the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9 that, it, that if, you confess with your, if you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And if you've never accepted Christ in your life as your personal Savior and you want to do that, I want you to pray this prayer with me silently as I pray. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner and I've fallen short. Forgive me of all the wrongs I've ever done, said, thought I believe that your son Jesus Christ died on the cross and you raised it from the dead for me lead and guide me in a way that's pleasing in your sight father I pray and I ask this in Jesus name amen if you said that prayer with sincerity you now belong to the kingdom of heaven the next thing you want to do is you want to uh, get your bible we use the NIV version but get your good study bible that's really important or you can download it in your phone. And I would suggest you start reading the Gospel of John. That's a good place to start. The next thing you want to do is, uh, and you do that because you want to learn as much as you can about Christ. The next step you want to do is find you a church home where you feel comfortable. A Bible teaching church where you're going to be taught, a church where you get praise, and a church where you're going to be encouraged as well as be challenged. Amen? Because you don't want to go to a church that's just beating you up and, and you feel like, man, I just feel, you know, you want to go to a church where you're going to feel uh, in, encouraged, but you also don't want to go to a church where you're always encouraged and your life is a debacle and you, you're never challenged. There ought to come times when you go to church you feel a little uncomfortable. Why is that? Because the Holy Spirit is dealing with you. So that not because they don't, the Holy Spirit, he doesn't like you, God loves you. He wants you to be better. 
because you're able to be better. Amen? So find a church home where you feel comfortable. The next thing you want to do is you want to get baptized if you've never been baptized before. Now, being baptized doesn't get you saved, but being baptized is an outward expression of an inward feeling and conviction. If you've accepted Christ, you're letting the world know, I am a believer in Christ, and you get baptized. It's symbolic. Amen? And understand what you've embarked upon is not a sprint, it is a marathon. So as you are on this journey, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to trip and fall. The key is when you make mistakes, repent, pick yourself up, and move forward. Amen? Amen. All right, listen, I hope again that you stay strong and be encouraged. So I'm going to close it out with this, and I'm going to let you go. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for those that may have given their lives to you, Father. We pray that you just lead and guide them in a mighty way. We thank you for all those that are here. Bless each and every one of them in a mighty way. Father, we just love you, and we give you the praise. We pray as we leave this place, grant all of us traveling grace. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Until next Sunday, may God richly bless you and yours.